So this is PDP. This is PDP lab day one. You're gonna have two days, okay? And this is all about getting data. So I want you to know what kind of data you're gonna to get today. Your lab is about ramps. It's kind of boring, I know. We'll do something fun at the end with Bunsen burners and pop cans and stuff. But for this, this is kind of like basic physics and it's gonna help you to understand what kind of data we need to get for an IB lab and how to deal with that data. Okay, so what are the things that you can do? We'll start with this. These are ramps. You can have, use either of these. And you can stack them up with books and things on that far right open shelf. You see those, all those books and video cassettes and those kind of things, those are stackers. So you can stack them up. And then we can use just simple, you can find a ball and roll it down. This ramp has kind of grooves in it so the ball can't get away, like that. It's gonna go faster, obviously, if it's steeper. If it's less steep, it'll, you might be able to get a constant velocity out of it and it'll be easier to time because it'll take a longer time to get down the ramp. And then we have these wooden boards and everybody from my last class put everything away so you can use a rolly cart like this. It's like a little car and you can roll it down the ramp like so. Okay, so what kind of data are we gonna get for your lab? What were your options for independent variable? Yes? Mass. You are Veron. Yeah, yeah we, can vi we can measure the mass, and there's a bunch of masses in those bottom drawers there. So you can take a block, slide a block down the ramp, and then you can take a mass, I'll use this teeny little one, but you can use bigger ones, and you can put it on there. And so you can vary the mass of the thing that's sliding down. Okay, so mass, what else can we vary? Angle. Say again? Angle. Angle and slope, yeah, okay, good. So we have mass, angle, anything else we can vary? Ah, so we can do friction, and we'll say surface. Now, how do you measure friction? This is how you do it. You take one of these. I should really be filming these drawers here, but you know where they are. This is a force meter. I have a whole bin full of them. And if you take a block like this, can they see this on the video? No. Oh. Down so you can see. Now you can't see what they see. Though. So we have ramp, ball, ramp, rolly carts, boards, all this stuff. If you take this and hook it onto your block, most of the blocks have little hooks on them, and you just pull it flat at a constant velocity, it will give you the force reading here. That's the force of friction. If you pull it at a constant velocity, your force applied will be the same as the force of friction pulling back. So you can get your force of friction, and then you can angle your ramp. Your force of friction will not change. It'll be the same. And then you can calculate where this block falls. To vary friction is tricky. You can try to do it with the surface, or you can put more mass on here and pull it again and get your force of friction with that mass. And so even though you're varying mass, you might call it force of friction because that's gonna make the friction bigger, okay? So you, if you're doing friction, you would list the forces that you get out of this. If you're doing mass, you just list the mass that you're putting on top of your object. We also have some weighted blocks too, which you can slide down as well. Okay, so that's like simple ramp stuff. 
you also have the option to use one of these. This is called an air track. Put your hand up if you've ever played air hockey. Okay, what, how does an air hockey table work? Yeah, exactly. What was your name? Danielle. Thank you, Danielle. The air hockey table shoots up air. And this does the same if you turn this on. It's like a vacuum, but it works in reverse. And so there's these little holes in here, and it shoots the air up, and it makes the friction really uh, almost zero. And so if you tilt this, you can have this come down a ramp. And so that's if you want zero friction, and you want to see uh, how maybe the angle varies or the displacement of the ramp or something. Now, in order to get what you want to measure, and what, by the way, what do we want to measure? These are independent, right? What are our dependent variables? Yeah, really. Speed and time. Good. Dependent are speed, so we'll call that velocity. Acceleration. Good, and acceleration. Now you mentioned time. We're gonna need time in order to get either of those, right? You need a distance and you need a time. Times can be difficult to get, especially if you have a, a steep ramp. One trick is you can have a ramp like this with your roller cart or whatever on it. And you can place, you can video the roll down and you can place another phone in your field of vision. So you can have a phone here with a timer and hit go and let go of your cart and then you video it. And then you can scrub through your video and see where you can make little marks on the ramp and you can see where your cart is at what time, okay? That's gonna give you uh, either a velocity or an acceleration. The acceleration is more difficult to get. So you can do this method. How many of you have Logger Pro on your computer? Okay, a couple, a few of you. Logger Pro is like a super hack. You can just make a video and go in Logger Pro and go click, 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 click. And it will record the data for you and make the graph. And if you're using Logger Pro, I can show you how to find the acceleration. It's really easy. So you can just make like five videos because we want to have five points so your graph should have five points okay that's probably like the least amount i don't want to make it too crazy for you if you really want to go like super extending then you are going to include uncertainties What does uncertainties mean? Are you going to have one number for each point? No, you're gonna have more than that. So you might have three or you might have four or five. And what are you gonna do with those multiple numbers? So for example, you might have a chart where you have T and V, right? and that's gonna give you a velocity or an acceleration. If you wanna do uncertainties, you might say T1, T2, and T3 at each distance. These could be reversed as well. You, could, you can time it and find the distance. What if you have, okay, this one was 2.31, and this one was 2.35, and this one was 2.28. What are you going to do with those numbers? Yeah, you're going to average them. And what you're going to put for your point on your graph is the average. Okay. So for these, you're going to have multiple times. You're going to average.
average these. And then you're going to find the uncertainty. And the uncertainty is the distance, the greatest distance from your average to any one of these points. You understand? Okay, let's do it. Let's do it together. Um, I don't know if my video can see this or not. No. No? Okay, I'm going to go back up to the work. Sorry, I know it's very early in the morning. You guys are doing very well. Okay, let's let's make up two uh, three numbers. So let's say you have. Can someone find me the average of these? Add them together. Well, let's see if we can do it. Six point nine four. Divided by three, it would be two thirty one three or something like that? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Oh yeah. Even at seven thirty in the morning. <laughs> okay, this is the average, right? Look at the differences between these numbers. So from here to here is very small difference, right? This is just a little bit. Uh, what's the difference between this average and this bottom number? About how much? Uh, four. Yeah, 0 0.04 maybe. So you just do this average minus that and get the answer. It doesn't matter if it's negative. What about for this one and that one? Point oh, isn't it point oh, like this is about 2.31, right? So that's about 0.07, isn't it? Oh no, it's only 0.03, yeah, you're right. Okay, so this one is 0.03, and this one is pretty much zero. And this one is 0.04. Which one is the biggest? This is the biggest, right? So this is your uncertainty. It's kind of a simple uncertainty, it's not a standard deviation, it's not a big crazy thing. This is what we do in physics because in physics we're often not using a normal distribution. So Mr. Richardson is going to teach you how to do standard deviation. And that's something you do in biology a lot because things are based on chance. And if you're based on chance, you have a normal distribution like this. And you can use a standard deviation for things like that. In physics, if we don't have the uncertainties right, then sometimes people die. So if you don't, if you get the deflection of a steel beam, and because you, you're going to use hundreds of steel beams in your bridge or your office building that you're that you're putting together, right? So we need to have the maximum uncertainty of that deflection. You need to be able to tell the engineer this beam bends 0.01 micrometers, but it's plus or minus 0 0.005 micrometers, or whatever it is. And you want the bigger uncertainty. So why do you want the biggest uncertainty? Not the smallest. Isn't it better to be more precise and get the smallest uncertainty? No? You're correct. It's not right. It's not good. Why is it not good? Okay, it's not that much different, yeah? You want the worst possible outcome. Exactly. You want the worst possible outcome, because that engineer, when you build that building, you're gonna get a beam that deflects to the highest uncertainty. And if the building is not made to withstand that deflection, what's gonna happen? It'll fall down. That's really bad, right? So we choose the highest uncertainty, so that's how you get your uncertainties. That's only, you only need to do that if you're like super, you know, extending. And Miss Wu and Mr. Richardson will carry that on for you. So, you need five points. And how do you get those points? You can do timing. You can film with the timer in there. You can also use this. This is called a photo gate. Everyone say photo gate. Okay. This is a timer. 
So this one plugs in, the other, these other ones are battery operated. And if I plug this in, it will, oh, I gotta like do it on the video. It looks like this. It's not, it's not showing? How about now? Yeah? yeah? Like the higher? Higher? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, if you flick this onto gate, you'll see a big zero there. And this is the gate thing, this black thing at the top. And right now there's a laser going from one side to the other. Don't put your finger in there because it'll cut your finger off. It won't cut your finger off. But it will, if you go like this, that says 0 0.0123. That's an interesting number. So that's the amount of seconds that the beam was broken. And if you hold your hand in there, the timer will run. And then when you take it out, the timer will stop. Okay. It's like one of those things at the Olympics. You know what I mean? And then you can reset it. So if you put that here on your air track and you tilt the air track and this runs down, it'll go through here. And if you have it set up right, it'll break the plane and it'll start timing and then it'll stop timing okay so it started timing here stop timing there so the length of this card is the distance that this traveled in that amount of time so if you have a distance and a time what can you find speed. good speed speed is distance not the full distance it went because it wasn't timing the whole time, right? Just this distance over that time will be your final velocity. Okay, so what can you do with the final velocity? You can use a formula. If you use this thing, you can use this second formula This is like a quick but neat physics lesson, okay? You wanna find acceleration. This is the displacement, so you know how far your cart went down the air track, yeah? Okay, there's little marks here and you can see how far it went. So you know that number. What's the initial velocity? Good, zero, so this is gone. You don't need to worry about that. And we know our VF. How do we find how do we find our VF? Yeah. Uh, the distance over our time. Good. This distance, so you just measure this, over that time will give you this final velocity. Okay. We have to solve for this A. How would I do that? We know the distance, right? Yeah. Okay, it's easy, but how do we do it? How do you algebra people, you mathy people? Yes, we divide by 2d. Right? Excellent, excellent. Okay, so we're gonna have vf squared divided by 2d, and that's gonna give you acceleration. So for this one, it's kind of easy, it's nice, you can just do this calculation. And this vf, remember, is the length of the card on the thing divided by the photo gate time. You square that, you divide by two, and you divide by the distance you went. It's nice and easy if you make your distance one meter, because then you just have to divide by two, right? So you can do a bunch of trials with this thing, and you can vary stuff. I have four of these. I think that's all. If you need to measure mass and stuff, we have scales. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Any other questions? Am I missing anything? Okay. Your lab will be marked based on the IB criteria, but it's basically the first section of the IB criteria is called exploration and it's out of six. And it's all about the design and how you get the data. So are you managing your variables well and setting up a decent experiment. Okay, you ready? How many people want to use the air track? Okay, 
All right, you can be in groups of one to three, but if you're in three, you have to make sure everyone participates and it's gotta be really good. Who wants to use a ramp and a rolly ball thing like this? One there. Who wants to do a ramp with a block sliding? A wooden ramp. You guys, okay. Who wants to do a, a ramp with a roller cart going down? Okay, you guys, okay. So today you have, <laughs> the clock says it's midnight. What time is it? Oh, I'm gonna turn this.